Well, I'm going to begin with, with you, John. I was just wondering, would it only ever have been you to write this screenplay? Was this a, something that you felt very precious about, that you, if, if anyone was ever going to turn it into a movie, it was always going to be your doing? Uh, in a way, I don't get... I mean, I work, I've worked in the movie industry for a while. I've written other screenplays, and I work on studio scripts and do rewrites and script doctoring. So you have to develop a level of detachment about your work because, you know, making a movie is a collaborative, you know, it's art by committee and you have to listen and trust other people. So you won't get very far if you're really precious about your stuff. But at the same time, as one will tell you, I can be, um, <laughs> I can be a pain <laughs> if I disagree. I mean, I'll fight my corner, as, yeah. as own always will, you know, yeah. and uh, that, that's, that's part of the thing, you know. But I think given the constraints of the budget and pressures uh, time-wise on us making this film, um, we, we're, we didn't really come to blows. That often, I think it gives you a lot. It gives gave me a lot of confidence having John as the scriptwriter, because in the end you want to, if if you're if the film is based on a very successful cult novel, you want to maintain that authentic voice. So um, yeah, and and so it gave us, I think, as 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 you know, when we went into making the film, a lot of confidence. I think. I mean, there's the film's obviously quite stylistic. It's quite comical in parts, but mm. there is this, this very dark, unsettling mm. sort of um, feeling running the whole way through it. Was it quite a challenge to to combine the more kind of comical aspects, the yep. sort of dark, subtle sort of comical aspects, uh, with the the kind of harsh? Kind of I think the whole thi the whole film for me was a great big balancing act. It was like a sort of walking a very fine line, and you could. And, and, and we, I felt that way all the way through. I mean, literally up until the moment we locked the picture, and I think we locked the picture twice. <laughs> so we locked it, and then we watched it, and then we went away, and we said, right, let's give it one more go. And we changed a bit of the VO, we changed a bit of the music. Because I think that it is, it is one of those films that you, you can't, it's not, you're, you're in sort of unknown territory a little bit with, with a film like this, where you've got the most unpleasant guy as your, as your hero or anti-hero yeah. and he's going to tell you a story and it's how you're going to and it's how, how you're going to balance and, how, and also the fact that you use humour to tell that story because ultimately it's a satire so it's how you use humour where the humour comes from and, and in the end I mean what I, my, my, one of my favourite bits of humour in the film is the very end where it's gone so dark that even the audience is thinking, OK, I get it now, this is never going to get any better. <laughs> and then there's the moment right at the end where it's just horrific, and that's, for me, the, 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 that's, where the, the, that's the key twist of the humour for me in the film. It's, you know, it's black comedy, mm. and that's always a hard thing to get right to, and because some people will just see the blackness mm. and they don't see the comedy. You can show a movie like this to ten people, and you maybe get three walkouts. You get five people who it plays very much like a thriller, a drama for. Uh, you get two or three who are absolutely killing themselves laughing, you know? And we're in Toronto at the film festival, and sometimes people feel they need permission to laugh at something this dark, because round, round the cinema, you could just hear dotted here and there, people up killing themselves laughing, but trying to keep it quiet, because they know they shouldn't be laughing at mm -hmm. some of this stuff, mm -hmm. you know? And well, you've worked at record companies before, was it ever as ever quite like this? <laughs> uh, I think the mentality that's represented um, in terms of the success at all costs, and you know, that, that whole, John Kennedy notion of success having a thousand fathers and failure being an orphan, that's very real, you know? Obviously, we didn't kill Andy, that I know of. But. <laughs> and have you had any feedback from kind of record, the kind of music industry? Do you know how they've responded, not only to the, obviously to this film, but to the, the original novel? Uh, the industry loved it. You know, um, I got more complaints from people who felt that they weren't in the book, that there wasn't a character <laughs> based in them than I did from people who had Actually, you know, we are the templates for characters. You know, the, the egos you're dealing with are so large. People would rather be at the party than not, even if the party is in hell and run by <laughs> Satan. You know, they'd rather be on the guest list. And it's a huge role for for Nicholas Holt. I'm mean, just wondering yeah. what it was about him that you felt was perfect for this for this part. Um, I think that I mean what he has in in sort of spades is charm, and I think you needed uh, we needed someone. You know, there aren't many British actors of his age that could have done this actually, because um, he's also got a, he's got a mischief to him, Nick. Um, he's got a great sense of humour, um, but ultimately he has this inherent charm that sort of allows you to when you're watching him. The, the, I think the audience is thinking thinking, come on, at some point there must be something in this guy that I can hang on to, and ultimately there isn't. But mm. I mean, but there, but he gives you th there's some, there's enough about him that makes him very watchable and enjoyable, even in the darkest of roles. So, no, he was a great he was he was great for this film, I think. 
He he has an interest in just physically, Nick, because you yeah. know, as we know, he is handsome, he is mm. charming, but he also has a sort of wolfish Mm-mm. quality to his mm. features that, mm. in, the, in the space of one scene, sometimes he can go from boyish to really scary. Yeah. It's just funny, John. Do you now picture Nicholas in the role of Spellfox when you imagine him in your mind? Yeah, I can't. No, it's funny when I write screenplays, you kind of usually have to have an actor in your head just to help you get the dialogue to flow. But when I write novels, I very rarely have that specific an idea of the character till late in the process. But yeah, now it's hard for me to imagine anyone other than Nick mm-hmm. doing it. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Well, thanks so much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you. Cheers. Right, thank cheers. You. I'll shake your hand. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you guys!